get a load of this. Apparently, six months ago, there was a zoo in Blackpool that was recruiting people as, and I'm going to quote here, seagull deterrents. Apparently, seagulls were stealing food from the animals across the whole zoo, and they wanted to hire people to act as seagull deterrents for 10 50 an hour. That's weird, right? But do you know what else is weird? The release of the DS423, a NAS that frankly, six months ago when it arrived on the scene, a lot of users, myself included, were very perplexed by. Synology is a brand that has always had a kind of formulaic approach to its releases, refreshing every two to three years, but Again, about 6 to 12 months ago, the brand reshaped its entire portfolio and today marks 6 months at the time of recording since the DS423 arrived on the scene. And today, I want to help you decide whether 6 months on, it deserves your data. Now, before we go any further, it's worth highlighting this is not a review. We've already done a review. We've already done a before you buy. We've done loads of performance testing. We've done Plex surveillance, DSM 7.2, the works on this. It'll all be linked in the description or it's on the side of the screen from YouTube. This video serves as a six months on is this still a good purchase? There's going to be users out there watching this that either one have already purchased this device and are just sort of wondering what else is out there and whether it's still cut in mustard. Two, there'll be users on the fence about to buy this in the likes of Black Friday or whatever that are thinking, is this still a decent enough NAS purchase? And there's also going to be people that have bought a few generations ago a Synology NASs, your 916s, your 918s, maybe your 920s, and are sitting there on the fence thinking about this device or whether they should sit tight and wait for the next generation. That's what this video is for. I'm going to revisit a lot of my pros and cons about this device from six months ago, see what has changed, what is still true and what isn't, and ultimately help you decide if it deserves your money and your data. But first and foremost, let's talk about one of the things about this device that at launch made me quite happy to hear and that was that this four bay the ds423 arrived with integrated graphics it was probably one of the largest areas of contention for a lot of users it was the fact that this system rocked out the game after ages and ages and ages and ages from synology not releasing cpus with integrated graphics and therefore for those that wanted flex transcoded to those that wanted to utilize more graphical enabled components on their processors were getting annoyed about this was going to arrive with it now Let's be honest, that CPU didn't please everyone. And six months on, when this arrived with the J4125 Intel CPU inside, there were users, myself included, who were not best pleased about this 2019 to 2020 generation CPU rocking in a 2023 NAS. And I'll tell you right now, six months on, I'm still not best pleased about it. In the six months since this has been released, not only have we seen other brands rock out better CPUs in the M5105 CPU and indeed the J6412 uh, Celeron CPU, both of which have got a better uh, embedded graphics handling and higher clock speed in that processor while maintaining the same TB, uh, TDP. But on top of that, we've seen more DIY solutions arrive in this thing. We're seeing a lot more middle ground solutions rocking the newer generation of Intel order like the N100 series CPU. And ever since Intel started dropping the Celeron and Pentium's family uh, CPUs and moving on to these new kind of middle ground between Celeron and Pentium processors there, the CPU in this has started to look increasingly more archaic there in terms of its age and what it's actually physically capable of. Now, it's still rocking around for a good price, and we have seen it arriving at a better price point than it was at launch. When it arrived on the scene, it was rocking this 450 to even close to 500 nicker price tag, which for its architecture basically being the same at that time as the two and a half or even three years old at that point, DS920, six months on, this is not looking like the best hardware in the market. And indeed, this, as I mentioned in a previous video, managed to make the DS923 a NAS that arrived with elements of mixed feelings when it came out of the gate to look increasingly better. Now, another thing that's worth highlighting about this device is six months on, is its performance potential, you know, as good as it was or as good as Synology was saying? And I would say right now, nee, kinda. What do I mean by that? Well, as I mentioned at the time in my reviews, this device arrived with two 1GB Ethernet ports there. 
It lacks any ability to uh, upgrade its network connectivity. It lacks any ability to add even USB adapters for 2.5 gig and 5 GBE, although you can use unofficial upgrades. Um, it also lacks any ability to add further storage with um, storage upgrades with the DS5 one, a DX517 uh, 5 bay expansion module there. Now, at the time, I criticised it for just feeling very limited. And at the time, because Synology was in the process of rejigging their whole portfolio, the result was that this looked really weak when a lot of this rejigging of the portfolio and um, changing the parameters for home and business devices was happening. Six months on, this only looks worse. Because six months on, not only have we got the likes of the DS923 now in the fold, with its, uh, with its better hardware under the bonnet. But now we're starting to hear about Synology rocking out pre-bundled solutions. You may or not have already heard about this. Synology will be rolling out the BST series. And these are the B-Station NAS devices. Now the BST150 is the one bay. It arrives pre-populated with a Synology hard drive inside. And then there is going to be larger capacity versions of that family. It has got a slightly more streamlined version of the software that still has all of the key applications you're gonna want from the Synology collaboration suite. But more importantly, it's pre-populating. It's probably going to eradicate, it's definitely eradicating the J-series, and it will presumably eradicate some, if not all, of the value series as time wears on. So where does this come in? Why is that anything to do with this device? That's because this device feels like, at launch and six months on, it has been intentionally hobbled. Because it has to sit underneath this device, the 923, in terms of the product family. And down here will be that B Station series for this progression. What that means is this, when it rolled out the gate um, six months ago, was in flux within this dynamic Synology portfolio that was changing. And six months on, that has only been exacerbated further. And the system architecture doesn't feel great when you're looking six months on on hardware architecture we saw on NAS devices, near enough identical, I might add, devices that were released in May, June and July of 2020. And it's going to be 2024 soon. That is a real pain in the bum. I feel like I've been super negative. So let's reel it in a little bit and talk about one of the things that I really praised this box on when it was launched. Alongside it supporting the full gamut of Synology's DSM portfolio, uh, 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 software portfolio, but when DSM 7.2 rolled out, every single feature of Synology's latest software runs on this device. Every single feature, not only you know, the standard multimedia stuff and the collaboration suite, but all of the business stuff, the VMs, the Docker, the surveillance, your active backup, your Synology drive, all of it runs on this system. And damn well, I might add as well. On top of that, the system arrived with upgradable memory, something that Synology was starting to err away from on their value series portfolio, but luckily was on here. It does that six gig cap thing that I hate because it's two gig of soldered memory, but nevertheless, at least it has that option of upgradability. But one of the other areas of real interest upgradability was those m2 nvmes because when this was launched when i heard about it a few months prior to its release synology had started enabling m2 nvmes as storage pools on their system what does that mean to the uninitiated it means not only have you got the main storage base for your data on hard drives but these two slots here at the bottom could be used and populated with m2 nvmes which are much much faster than hard drives now up to that point these devices only allowed you to use these for caching caching for those that aren't aware is effectively uh, improved access or right to data on the system for preferred data now for uh, right uh, caching it would mean that data is sent to the system and it's written directly onto the ssds and in the background it's moved over to the hard drives the slower hard drives making uploads much more faster and consistent when it comes to read more frequently accessed smaller data you know metadata small micro 4k data is copied over to the ssd for caching now that's beneficial you know for those different kinds of access but there are users that are spending a lot on these ssds that want to use them for storage pools which brings us back around to this device because when the ds423 arrived it surprised pretty much everyone that synology enabled these bays as storage pools why was it surprising because up to that point 
they had only enabled that feature on a lot of their uh, uh, SMB business devices. These are the ones running on the embedded Ryzen's. None of the systems were running on Intel's, and none of them certainly were running on CPUs from you know similar to systems they'd released three years earlier. But despite that, when this arrived, you can use these for storage pools, even though it has exactly the same hardware architecture as the DS920, the DS420, the DS720, the DS620 Slim, and others. It's still allowed to have allowed you to have M2 NVMe to storage pools when all of those other devices didn't. Now we can argue until the cows come home about slightly selective choices being made by the brand to promote their systems, but I will say that six months on, that is still a very desirable feature on this device. Once you factor in, it includes all of the features and services of DSM, and you factor in that this system has got the four main bays of storage and the support of two, two, two M2 NVMe storage bays. As a scratch disk, you can use one as caching and one as a storage pool. That's fantastic stuff. But six months on, we also have to address the fact that not only are they limited to Gen 2 speeds, which is a bit pants, because it's a Gen 2 CPU, there's that system architecture again, but also, despite this having a hardware architecture where Synology have um, shown in previous generations with that CPU architecture, huge compatibility lists for hard drives and SSDs, the SSD and hard drive compatibility listings for this device are very very small what i mean by that if you want to use the latest 18 20 22 tb hard drives you are out of luck my friend because when it comes to utilizing third party hard drives from seagate and wd you know those brands that have released a larger spectrum of hard drives the compatibility lists are incredibly small they were small when this was released six months ago but what i'm here to tell you is six months later Synology have not really added to that. They added a few things like surveillance drives and purple drives, stuff like that. When it comes to Pro Series drives, when it comes to any third-party drive bigger than 16 TB, none of them have been added. Despite multiple platforms, including NAS Compares, testing bigger than 16 TB third-party drives on this system, and they work. On top of that, Synology have included their own 18 TB drives in their Pro Series of hard drives, the HAT5300. So they're clearly testing bigger than 16 TB, but as long as it's their own drives. And that's something I think a lot of people are not a big fan of, and were hoping, myself included, that over time, as the system was around for those six months, that Synology would have updated that compatibility list more. And they haven't. Same goes for those M2 NVMEs I mentioned. If you want to use M2 NVMEs for storage pools in this, you've got to use their drives. If you use any third-party drives for the M2 NVMe storage pools, you cannot use that feature. Unlike using third-party hard drives where the system goes, you know you're using you know, unverified drives, right? That might be a problem. But if you're okay to proceed, go for it. When it comes to the SSDs as pools, it will just flat out not let you. You've got to use their own drives, their own SMV3400 drives, which unfortunately are slower than most of the other drives in the market and are more expensive than other drives in the market. And ultimately, it just feels like a bit of a swizz. And six months later on, that swizz has not felt any better. Now, other than that, between this, the only other criticism I've got, as mentioned earlier on, is a complete lack of upgradability on this. Now, that was, you know, that was still the case six months ago. And I think, unfortunately, Nothing's changed in the six months. One of the things I mentioned in my original review of this was the hope, the sincere hope, that within the six months since its release, Synology would rock out upgrades. Upgrades such as 2.5G to USB upgrades there. Upgrades like multi-port USB adapters. Upgrades like USB to 5 gigabit Ethernet adapters. All of the devices here on the table have been in the third party, in GitHub, and in the hacker or modding community. They have managed to make all of these work on this system, but there is no official way to do that. And six months on, I've wanted to give Synology the benefit of the doubt for them to release network upgrades that are connected via USB, but the brand has clearly decided not to. And unfortunately, six months on, that means this system has an even lower glass ceiling than many of us would like. I do like this system, and within the context of the Synology portfolio, 
it kind of makes sense. But we can't say that six months down the line, this system has evolved substantially. And in many regards, this has started making the DS923 Plus more appealing. And as Synology moves towards you know, storage bundles, as they move towards a lot of their systems being arriving pre-populated, and Synology moves towards a you know locked single ecosystem in a number of ways, I think the DS423 not only is a system that isn't going to please everyone, but at the same time, it may be one of the last of its kind as Synology changes its position on a lot of its hardware architecture. And I think in a way, a lot of home users are not going to be overly pleased with it. I think the lower tiers are going to be happy. I think the higher business tiers are going to be happy. But this middle ground here, I don't think they're going to be super pleased. And for you, you're going to have to make a decision whether you think this system doesn't have the scalability and upgradability for your needs, or do you want to jump on board because it may be the last of its kind before Synology changes that portfolio and the B station goes up and the business comes down and the middle gets squished and turned into the likes of the S923. It is a good NAS, but if only really you should look at it if it's on sale or a good offer. It's a good NAS with, you know, robust hardware inside but not the most current ultimately i can still recommend it but i still don't think it's the best thing Synology's ever done and i'm worried about where the brand is going with some of their releases i know it's not a great ending to this video but i'm only telling it from the heart thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video let me know if you have there's links in the description to all the guides and tests we've done for this box if you need a further helping hand or you're not quite sure what solution you need use the links in the description for the free advice section over on nas compares our discord our community forum ask nas compares or head over to ko and patreon to join our membership program or to um go for the service areas there where you can hire myself or eddie to help you with your data storage needs on like a zoom consultation and we've got the membership where we do the monthly zooms and early access to our videos but apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time